the night, the roar of thunder, the rattle of steel swords and chains, mountains of corpses, and a protagonist who thrusts his sword into his adversary. There is no room for weakness or compassion in this film, only meat and courage. The opening credits end and the film takes the viewer into historical context. On March 12, 1623, by the lunar calendar, the 15th Vaughn of the Korean state of Joseon escaped from his palace, fleeing from his enemies. A soldier with a child in his arms rides close by. They arrive at the outpost, where the ruler is informed of the rebellion and offered a plan of action. Wong responds that he has lost something far greater than the palace. They are attacked, but protagonist Tae Yul stands up to a large group of rebels. He is asked to deflect to their side, but our hero refuses. The warrior's code is to follow his master to the end. He bears his sword against one of the warriors named Min Seung Ho. A battle to the death unfolds in which neither is going to yield. Tae Yul is wounded and is about to make one last swing of his sword, swinging it over his head, and that is where the scene ends. A mountainous forest area, the girl Tae Yok is hunting a hare with her father. The man turns out to be the main character. He becomes ill and the daughter calls home a monk. He examines him and says his eyes are injured and things are only getting worse. Medicine from the city can help. The guest offers to go to the owner of the town shop, who owes him a favor, and get the medicine from her. Before he leaves, the man says to start the treatment as soon as possible. The daughter communicates with her father about this, but he does not want to leave the mountains. It is much safer in the mountains. The girl is about to go alone, but the hero can't just leave her to go alone. A meeting of a king and his closest advisors takes place. The inhabitants have been taken captive by the Quabanian state, barbarians, and the ruler wants to pay a ransom, but his cronies are against it. Among them is the leader of the rebellion from the beginning of the film, Lee mok -yo. He changes the mind of his king and wants to face the barbarians himself. Min Seung Ho wants to leave the palace. He feels guilty that he cannot do anything for his state. Tae Yul comes to the market with his daughter. The girl is delighted with the city views and is very excited about everything she sees, but the hero does not maintain a similar mood. They witness a woman being sold by her family who tries to be ransomed. The bandits taunt the broken man, but the people around them raise their tools as weapons. At this point, the head of this bandit arrives. The hostage's husband asks for his wife's release, but gets punched in the face. The hero's daughter wants to intervene, but her father stops her. The guards arrive and ask the bandits to introduce themselves. They are messengers of the King Empire, so they cannot be arrested. The guards just walk away. Lee mok -yo meets with a representative of the Kabanans. In the middle of the conversation, the lord of the enemy state, Garute, appears, and with him the bandits from the marketplace. He insults his interlocutors, to which Ming Xiong Ho reacts and puts him in his place. Garute offers the famous swordsman a duel with his subordinate. Mok Yo asks the subordinate not to fight at full strength. During the duel, Xiong Ho is insulted, after which he becomes serious and defeats the barbarian. The lord of the Quibanian thanks the swordsman for the beautiful duel and leaves the territory. The protagonist arrives at the shopkeeper's house, but they cannot be helped. A cure can be obtained with great connections and money, but Tae Yul has neither, and besides, it is the monk that owes her, not the other way around. The girl tries to negotiate, but still fails, and they leave. Guru Tae and his subordinates come to the shopkeeper and notice the hero. He offers to ransom his slaves, but is refused. The ruler of the Quibanians insults the girl and offers to test her dagger skills. He has heard of her skill and wants to see for himself. The girl leaves and warns the guardsmen to stay away from this man. He is very dangerous. The main character and his daughter go home. Tae Yuk is upset by the monk's deception. Tae Yuk gives the distraught girl a bracelet she saw at the market. They stop by a small diner where we are introduced to the woman who nurtured the girl. The shopkeeper comes to meet Mok Yo. He needs a young girl to care for his sick mother. The protagonist has a dream where he fights Min Sung Ho. The adversary breaks Tae Yul's sword and shards enter his eyes. He wakes up and walks out into the courtyard, remembering that ill-fated day and holding his eyes with his hand. The next scene also shows the man who inflicted the wound. He distributes rice to the needy until Gurute's soldiers arrive. They take him to the ship to meet their leader and his assistant. The hardcore invader believes that it is not fitting for a swordsman to give rice to the poor, at the same time offering a good position in the Qing Dynasty court. Min Ho has left the service and does not want to return but the ruler of the Quibanian offers to let all the slaves go in return. He recalls the swordsman raised his weapon against the past king. Min already wanted to bear his sword, but after that, his country might be gone. The girl offers to bring him back, but Garute decides to give him time. The protagonist's daughter wakes up, but does not find him. A shopkeeper comes to their house offering a job. She must care for the mother of an influential officer, in return for medication for her father. The girl goes to the royal palace to meet the official. 
She thanks the woman and Lee Mak Yo. The girls leave the officials' grounds, to which the swordsman arrives at this time. He notices the bandages on the girl's hair and becomes alarmed. The exact same cloth was worn by the royal family. The official wants to adopt the girl. The main character looks into the blacksmith's shop. He chats with the blacksmith and remembers the past and the child. He wants to live with her in solitude, away from people. The blacksmith says that this world will not leave the swordsman alone. The hero leaves after these words. When he returns home, he learns that his daughter has gone off with a rich woman. The girl is glad that she has found work and can buy medicine for her father, but she fears that he will not want to part with his daughter. Garute's warriors make a mess of the noblewoman's house. They are asked to leave, after which a battle ensues. One soldier easily deals with the guard and the girl herself. They want to continue the bullying, but Tae Yok intervenes. She is about to be attacked. The father appears and is about to leave with his daughter. To do this, he needs to fall to his knees and apologize. He does so, but the Quibanian soldiers wants to take the girl's virginity. After these words, the hero is attacked by another soldier. He defends himself and begins a fight in which he easily deals with them with a simple cudgel. Min Ho is watching from the sidelines. A flashback telling the past begins. The hero is hit in the face by splinters of wood and his eyes are wounded. His king surrendered himself, but before doing so, he gave a piece of his robe to a loyal soldier and asked him to take care of the child. Tae Yul tells the girl the truth, so she says she will always consider him her father and tells him about his work. The hero sees no point in having good eyesight if he can't see her. But the girl decides to go anyway so that she can live in a good home in good conditions. The officials of Joseon discuss the situation with the enemy state. One of them offers to give his adopted daughter as a gift, but Lee Mak Yo hopes for the best. Min Ho overhears this. He plunges his blade into the pillar and recalls the past. The old king orders his generals to surrender right on the battlefield to save the lives of his men. Tae Yok leaves the house while the hero sleeps. She asks the hostess of the dinner to take care of her father and leaves while Tae Yol sits in her room. With her, the girl takes the bracelet her father gave her. Guru Tae listens to an intercepted message from Joseon officials. He is asked to reprimand his enemies. He then interrogates his soldiers about their duel in the shop and arrives delighted with the man's skills. The villain sends a squad of ninjas after the swordsman. The shopkeeper tries to cheer up the abandoned father. He does not accept this and goes to visit his daughter. He is attacked in the woods. He fights back and retrieves his blade from his club. It is a shard of the sword he fought with against Min Ho. Lee Mak Yo prepares his daughter's things for departure. At this moment, they are attacked. The girls notice the assassination squad and try to hide. But they are found and taken to the other prisoners and Garute. He is about to kill Tae Yak and is stopped because she is the daughter of the man he is looking for. Min Ho shows up and the official hopes for his help, but it's the other way around. The swordsman regrets that he did not once lead the rebellion himself and let his beliefs cloud his mind. The shopkeeper is broken into by one of Kobanian's lord fighters. He searches for the protagonist and kills all the guards in the building. Tae Yul appears and kills the soldier, then puts a blade to the girl's throat and asks for her daughter's whereabouts. The hero learns that the girl has fallen into Lee Mok's hand. He intends to solve his problems himself and heads to the swordsman's gambling house. Lee Mok is about to speak to the king about the situation, but finds Garute in his chambers. Guoban's army has approached the borders, and the ruler of Joseon decides to accept defeat. Tae Yul interrogates the slave trader and mercilessly kills him, despite his pleas for mercy. Tae Yul goes to a slave trader's camp, where a man from the market who wanted to save his wife is beaten. The hero kills all the bandits, saving the owner of the diner and the other prisoners. The woman tells him that the girl was taken away two hours ago and gives the hero his daughter's bell. Lee Mok gathers the people to rescue the girls. At this time, the daughters are imprisoned. Guru Tae arrives and orders the girls to be transfers to a ship. Lee Mok gathers the men and goes to negotiate with the enemy. There, a large group of men are already waiting for them to make the first strike. The chosen soldiers decide to attack, but they are all gunned down. Guru Tae's fighters corner the official and are about to kill him until the protagonist shows up. Tae Yul fights and kills one until soldiers with rifles come running at the sound of the fight. An incredibly beautiful fight scene begins, shot in one take, full of blood and slow-mo. Later, another group of fighters rushes in, but the hero has a hard time with them from fatigue and poor eyesight. Garute's soldiers escape while the hero kills the remaining fighters. Lee Mok recognizes this man as the warrior who guarded the former king. The old official falls to his knees and tearfully begs for his daughter back. The hero blames the troubles of the state on him and the coup d'etat that once took place. He collapses without strength and sees his daughter before him. In the dungeon, Min Ho watches the girl and sees a piece of cloth torn from her former king's clothes. Garute recalls the past and it becomes clear that he knows the protagonist. Once upon a time, Tae Yul sat in his dungeons and killed many people. 
He wounded the Lord of Quaban and left a scar. A soldier who escaped from the battlefield comes running in and defies his king. The villain does not accept such insolence and directly sentences him to death. The soldier attacks the king and receives a fatal blow. The villain orders him to bring the hero's daughter, but Minho says he will come himself. A scene from the past is shown and it becomes clear that after escaping from a Quabanian prison, the hero is rescued from his pursuers by the king of Josian himself and takes him himself. The Yule wakes up with a blindfold over his eyes. Once removed, he sees everything blurry and in this state follows his daughter despite the danger of losing his sight. Minho waits for his adversary and recalls his actions. Tae Yul picks up his new sword and races to the Quaban ship. On the way, he meets a former comrade and vassal of his king, Min Ho. The swordsman asks the hero to surrender, but is refused. A duel begins. The two swordsmen want to find out who is the best. They wound each other but continue to remain calm. Garute watches this and marvels at how a hero can fight with such vision. The hero adopts a stance and brings his hands above his head, as he did in the first fight, and, guided by the sounds, wounded his opponent and aims his blade straight for his throat. Minho is about to give his opponent the girl's royal cloth, but Garute kills him for defeat. On the hilt of his sword is the bracelet of Tae Yok. Quibanian King asks him to follow, and Tae Yol manages to discern the cloth in the already dead swordsman's hand. Garute leads them to the circular arena and promises to free the captive if he wins. The wounded and nearly blind warrior finds it hard to fight. He receives several wounds, but his daughter is brought to the arena, which multiplies his zeal for victory. Tae Yul kills his opponent's assistant with a swing of his sword. This removes the smirk from Garute's face. The protagonist fights hard, but still defeats the Quibanian lord at the end. The film sends us back in time again and shows a scene of a training bout between the protagonist and the king. Her Majesty appreciates the young swordsman's skills and appoints him as a retainer. On this day, Tae Yul sees a little girl for the first time, who later becomes his daughter. Presently, he walks with her to his home in the mountains and follows her by the sound of a bell. The girl still decides to stay close to her father, and he wants to see the world.